We're here with Will Brinton uh, this afternoon. We're in a soil pit in Pennsylvania, and I wanted to say thanks very much. I know that this was unscheduled, but when I saw you, I really wanted to try and get to talk to you and talk a, a, a little bit about the things that you're doing. Great. Happy to make it possible. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, well, one of the things that um, I've been following some of the talks you've done and spoken with you as well, but and I, I, I broached this question about soil carbon, and you responded uh, um, in, in a way that I thought was interesting. Talk to us about soils, soil carbon, and soil carbon dioxide for a minute, if you will. And perhaps mm -hmm. sort of some of the history of, of why we're only looking at some of that stuff today. Well, certainly from the point of view of soil testing, which is my industry that I'm in, We've all known about soil carbon for the, all the history of ag science, going back to the 1850s and beyond. But we developed a, an infrastructure of soil testing that was just looking at nutrients. And of course, we did it so that we can fertilize all these crops and make them grow to optimum yield, and so on and so on. But we tooled up our laboratories to focus on minerals. Now, very recently, carbon has entered into the discussion. And yes, we have the capability to measure carbon, and we combust soil to measure carbon. But what is that? Just carbon? I tell people there's no such thing in soil as C, carbon. It doesn't exist as carbon. It exists as organic matter from living, once living material, detritus that's decomposing. And you can't see it here, but there's humus all through here that has carbon in it. 50% of humus is carbon. The rest is hydrogen, oxygen, and some minerals, nitrogen in particular, and then phosphorus and a little sulfur, bound up in this complex molecule. But here's what I'm saying about carbon. It's really, the, you have to see it in the active sense of being carbon dioxide. Well, when, when I say carbon dioxide, you say, oh, there's CO2 in the air, and that's what all the climate change discussion is about. But these soils are producing CO2 from the carbon. How, it's not a chemical reaction. It's a biological process. Microorganisms are feeding on this organic matter right here and turning it into nutrients for the body and releasing the C as CO2, which is coming up here, diffusing up through the soil. The beauty of the CO2 relationship is that what's the primary requirement of a growing plant that absorbs sunlight? It's going to be carbon, carbon dioxide. That's correct. Without the carbon dioxide, no sugars are formed, and the whole infrastructure of plant metabolism doesn't happen. So we naively think, oh, plants are just getting the CO2 from the air. But if you think dynamically, the CO2 is coming from the soil. And this is a great canopy here to show it. These are rich soils. There's a high activity. We've measured the respiration rate in the soil. We can quantify that now as CO2 per acre. That's what's getting really exciting. This plant canopy has a very high CO2 demand during full growth, probably in the order of 50 to 100 pounds of CO2 per day while these radish plants are at full growth. Where is the CO2 coming from? Well, isn't it convenient it's being produced right here in the soil? And it's bubbling up out of the soil, so to speak, by capillary and diffusion, going past the water molecules and soil particles, and the plant leaves are grabbing it and recycling it immediately. So the humus, it was humus one minute, next hour it's CO2, another hour later it's synthesized sugar in the plants and it's on its way back down into the soil. So that's my, my carbon, carbon dioxide spiel. Well, that's, that's interesting. Um, we've, we've never really seen, even <coughs> thought about carbon as being a limiting nutrient, but you had mentioned that now there are some agronomists beginning to talk about some crops may be carbon limited. And that's, to me, that's a mind-blowing idea. Yes, you take a thick canopy of crop. I mean, picture corn here, 10 feet high, completely dense canopy. The requirement of corn for carbon can be in, uh, f for CO2 yes. is four to 500 pounds a day yes. at full growth. There's no way the air has that. I mean, I've done the calculations. It takes 13 cubic acres of air going all the way up 
to supply that much CO2 to the plant, which means carbon dioxide is diffusing down from 1,000 feet or more above the soil to get into the plant. But the whole point is, if the soil is dead, if there's very little life in it, there's no or very little CO2 coming out of the soil, how are those plants getting all that carbon? Now, uh, we're seeing people begin to take note. This is old-fashioned crop physiology, by the way. There's not a lot of people studying that anymore. Good old plant physiology. But carbon dioxide requirements can be quantified. And I believe we will find that there's evidence that canopies during full growth are CO2 limited. And what that means is photosynthesis saturates out early. So the plant can't take up nitrogen if the CO2 isn't there commensurate to meet the requirement of the metabolism. Because taking up nutrients is a metabolically depleting process. It's not a passive process. So it's a whole system. And I think as we begin to quantify CO2, we're going to have some astonishing discoveries here in terms of crop yield limitations. Take us 10 years from now. What, what are we going to see in terms of looking at carbon and crop growth? We're certainly going to see in the laboratory field, in the soil testing field that I'm working into, an upgrading of testing methods to include parameters that directly address the soil's ability to turn over carbon. Obviously, we're all interested in carbon sequestration. But again, it's not inorganic carbon we're trying to sequester. It's living carbon. It has to be humus or plant litter in the process of decaying and turning over. So we're not, we're not building so much a storage bank, but a temporary reservoir. And we want to raise the water level in the reservoir so there's enough to meet the demands through the course of the year. So testing methods will be one big step forward. And then we're going to change our farming practices to be carbon-oriented. Because it's not just NPK, it's CNPK. Yep. That's the difference.